Faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. Welcome to today's message from Harvest Chapel International. We believe the message will be a blessing to you as you imbibe God's truth. God bless you. Papa, all of us help me to thank our Papa and clap like you know what you are doing. God bless those who are standing and God bless those who are clapping from their heart. Now add the noise to what you are doing. Continue, don't stop. You are clapping for your papa. Ah. As you are clapping, may doors open for you. Ah. Sha da 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 da. Anytime Papa come to Takrade, he always prophesy in my life. And I can tell you all the prophecies come to pass. I remember, I remember my first traveling outside when he came to Takrade. He said, Chet, watch your pastor. He's about to travel outside Ghana. And all of a sudden, as I was in my office, a church member just came and said, Also, oh, bring your passport. Pa and I travel outside. <laughs> the following year, the following year, he came again and he said, Pastor, will you come? Let me pray for you. You are about to travel again. And he laid hands on me. And that same year, I travel outside. Last year, he came again. He said, Osofu, come. I see you travel again. And he lay hands again. And I travel again. <laughs> Hallelujah. And since that time, any time you call me, people know that I'm about to travel outside. <laughs> so, for me, so for me, I don't take Papa for granted. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm not the type you can just lay hands on me. I always follow the, follow the protocol. You know, he is the father of this house. Hallelujah. Father means source. He's our general overseer. And always the blessing comes from the head. So anytime the head comes around, I bring my head. <laughs> I don't joke. See? And gradually my life is changing. Amen. So Papa, thank you very, very much. I remember when I entered Harvest Chapel 2001. That Sunday, I remember Pastor Iman was preaching. And God said to me, learn wisdom from this man. He said, he's embodiment of wisdom. He has a big heart. So learn wisdom and insight from him. And one of the words he always used, if you have Bible, if you have God, if you have Holy Spirit, and if you have Jesus. He said, you cannot fail. And sometimes when you get there, the way you move with passion, he said, You cannot fail. And I say, Hey, then there will be no way I can fail. Hallelujah. And since that time, those who have been in Takrade Church, most of them called me wise man. They didn't know I tap it from somewhere.
Please take your seat. You know, this kind of atmosphere, I know that I can preach. Ah, I can preach. I tell you, I can preach. And all the pastors have been helping me in so many ways. You know, I salute all of you. Hallelujah. Those who did not come today, I tell you, they will miss it. Hallelujah. Today, I will talk about mystery. Hallelujah. Mystery. Maybe I'll talk about four mysteries in the kingdom. And I believe that God will bless all of us. Amen. Amen. Let's open our Bible to Mark chapter 4 verse 11. Mark chapter 4 verse 11. And he said unto them, Unto you it is given to know the mystery of the kingdom of God. He said unto you, you the church, it has been given to you for you to know the mystery of the kingdom. Now, please watch me. And if you have notebook, when I quote the scriptures, you write it, then you watch me. I want to see your face. We are communicating together. Hallelujah. When I enter church, God said, church is your classroom. And you have to learn. He said, there are so many bottles you need to borrow. Sam, he said to me, there are different types of personalities that will come into my temple, my kingdom. And if you open your eyes, you can learn from so many angles. And this is how you have to learn. Watch. 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 And he said, you, it has been given to you to know the mystery when we are talking about mystery, we are talking about the secrets of God. And in the kingdom, there are a lot of secrets. And this is how to now God will make me dive more in. Hallelujah. Now, when any time Jesus approaches the disciples, the last, any time he was preaching in the public, he preached and he preached parables. And people become confused. But when the disciples draw close, he opened himself to them and bring it down into their level the reason is that he said for you it has been given to you for you to know the secrets of the kingdom turn to somebody to now you will know the secrets of the kingdom i don't like the way you are doing it shake the person and say to now you know this the secrets of the kingdom Thank you, Papa. Now, the first mystery I will talk about is the church. You know, church is a mystery. Church is a mystery. Carpenters come around, lawyers come around, teachers come around, masons come around, online come around, learners come around. Church is a mystery. And all of us are in the kingdom, all of us are learners. We come to learn from the king. Hallelujah. And anytime you refuse to learn, you'll be rejected. That is why Jesus called them disciples. A disciple is a devoted learner. So if you call yourself a disciple and you are not learning, then you are not a disciple. And Jesus said you can't serve two masters. So anytime you see Jesus as your master, then he becomes your teacher. And in this kingdom, he is the teacher. He teaches all of us. Hallelujah. Yeah. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 32. The mystery of the church. And this year I will say within 15 minutes, then I will move on. And he said, this is great mystery. But I speak concerning Christ and the church. This is a great mystery. It means that we have levels of mystery. And concerning the church, it's a great mystery. Hallelujah. That my brothers and sisters, our father is true. I learned my English in the church.
Can I come down? I learned my English in the church. I was a tree preacher, sending to go and lead an English church. And any time they introduce me, they introduce me with English. And I will pick tea. <laughs> hey! And one, one day, one day, Holy Spirit said to me, if change comes and you don't change, change will force you to be changed. Are you getting me? You see, Vasi did not change. He married to a, a king, but he refused to change. He thought that he can do his own things. And because of that, he was rejected. When you come into the kingdom, there are a lot of things God will force you to learn. And it's for your tomorrow. Hallelujah. There are some things you need to learn right now because of your tomorrow, because of where you are going. And if you refuse to stay where you are, change will come. But environment will force you to be changed. Hallelujah. Even politicians understand this change. So if you are a disciple, learn and learn well. Turn to somebody and say, learn and learn well. So, one day I got up and said, from today going, I will preach English. And by the grace of God, for the sake of Pastor Dominic and the, and the, the pioneer leaders, you can see, the, the intellectuals are in Takrade. The best comes from West. Hallelujah. So, when I said it, everybody was watching down. They are writing down. What is about to happen? But you see, Holy Spirit is the best teacher. When I went to Takra, one of the things the Holy Spirit showed to me, Genesis chapter 28, verse 15, he said, I will never leave you or forsake you until I fulfill whatever I said about you. So I, I saw myself that God will never leave me as long as English it's one of the languages in the whole world wide. I can speak it. Hallelujah. I remember God, one day God said to me, watch Pastor Face. The day he was preaching tea. <laughs> oh, I remember. He, that day he brought a tree Bible. And he, he quoted a certain scripture. And Longus missed it. And he said, bring the Bible, let me quote it for you. And I said, wow. You see, in classroom, there are levels. Some are ahead of you. Some are behind you. And all these people, you can learn from them. Hallelujah. Even the one you are sitting close to, you can learn from them. Is it true? Even Bible, the Bible says that it has been writing for our examples. So there are some scriptures it's for your example it's for your learning and it's for my learning and gradually sometimes when i'm when i'm preaching i make mistake and holy when i anytime i go home holy spirit is next time say it in this way yes my first platform in outside ghana was Victory Bible Church in Dubai. Yes. And uh, when I started preaching, they were crapping. They were crapping. They were crapping. They were crapping. So I said, all of you, stop. <laughs> and the room became quiet. And I said, I learned my English in the pulpit. And the, the room became more quiet. My brothers, let us stop marking people. You see, church is a mystery. It's where the porter, you know, molds some crane. He used crane to mold destinies. Some, they didn't have fathers who controlled them, who guard them, who lead them. And all of a sudden, God will bring them into the church. And God is there purposely to shape their destiny for the calling ahead of them. 
so if you are not careful if you are not careful you'll be a stumbling bro look at the 12 disciples Jesus picked them you can see that they were class of people accountant Matthew was accountant a task collector Peter fisherman look at different types of destinies but the master was molding them making sure that they can stand in the test of time because the future they are the one that will call in the gospel so he made sure within that three years he was feeding them with the word feeding them with the knowledge of god feeding them sometimes he rebooks them but he makes sure that they won't backslide what kind of rebook are you rebook rebooking church is a mystery I remember one day I came to Harvest Chapel is a mystery. Let me tell you one of my revelations. I came to church and I saw the pool. I will quote from the scriptures. I saw the pool. And anybody that would dive into that pool, river, that person becomes somebody. And God said to me, Never beg for money here. You learn to dive in. What is making other people success, successful? God will do the same thing for you and i have seen people listen i have seen people and it is true i have seen students who came here as nobody and as they were consistently becoming obedient to the teachings to the books to the dialysis i saw their life tainted oh i can mention people i, I can mention people gradually their life changed I me mean, i came here as nobody as nobody as nobody look at the way you are clapping you don't believe because now i remember the first time i stepped here that was the first day they started the tree service at the main gate yes you were about 15. i remember i came here as nobody but by the grace of God we are moving forward I prophesy to you as long as you will remain in this mystery church you will move forward if I'm talking to you just get up and say yes if I'm talking to you say I'm blessed now let me dive more in concerning this mystery you see the first time jacob saw church he said hey this is better and i didn't know this is heaven gate the house of god and i didn't know a lot of people don't know the mystery about church they mark they come here and they mark time they come here and they gossip they come here and choose wrong friends they don't know it's a mystery was running away from the brother and he found a certain quiet place and he said let me sleep here now as Jacob was sleeping the Bible said that he saw a ladder from heaven to the ground and he said what and he saw the angels moving around through and fro through and fro through and fro now he pick a stone he pick up the first person who used anointing oil is jacob and it, it was a mystery nobody it's not abraham that taught jacob how to use anointing oil it's not isaac that taught jacob how to use anointing oil he was moved by the inspiration of god and he decided to pick anointing oil and he poured the oil on the stone and he said god if you take care of me and give me food to eat then i will come back into this place 
and whatever you give to me i'll give you one tent tight there are a lot of mysteries in the church you know why sometimes it becomes difficult for you to take instructions you don't understand church church is a place where the angels move 24 7. hallelujah hallelujah are you so quiet why are you quiet Hebrews chapter 12, 22 to 24. I'm still talking about church. Mystery. Hebrews chapter, yes. Now, David is the one that used the word Zion. Jacob called that church Bethel. David called it Zion. Paul called it mystery. What name are you calling your church? What revelation God is showing to you? If you got it right, I tell you, living, running away from the house of God will be very difficult. Because it becomes a personal something. It becomes intimacy, relationship. It's not like my father is forcing me. It's not like my pastor is forcing me. It's not like my mentor is forcing me. It becomes personal. And when you got it right, nothing can stop you. The reason why nowadays anything at all can drive a Christian from the church is that because they don't understand that personal encounter. Paul said, what can separate me from the love of God? When you get it right, nothing can separate you from this love. And if you have the love of God, say, I have the love of God. Now he said, but you have come to Mount Zion unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly, the church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood sprinkle, that speak better things than Abel's blood. A Abel, continue, my brother. I'm feeling it. Hallelujah. This is Zion. Hey. It becomes a secret place. He who dwells in the secret place of the Mosai goes abide under the shadow of the Almighty. Jesus said, if you abide in my word, it becomes personal. It's an, at it's, it's a, it's a, it's an it's atmosphere. The more you can get it right, the more you can dwell there. No, Peter said, Jesus, let me build three tents. One is for you, one is for Moses, and one is for Elijah. The secret is that he saw something he has never seen before. Hallelujah. Amen. Zion, the city of the living God. Church is a city. It's a city. It's a city. Let's read more. Let's read more. Psalm 40 says, verse 4. I said, I want to dwell in Zion, the church, the church, then I move on. Fast, fast. Yes. There is a river, the stream thereof shall make glad the city of God. The city of God. The city of God, the church. The holy place of tabernacle of the Most High. The Hebrew writer said, you have come to Mount Zion. Now, David said, there is a stream. There is a river. And I told you, the, when, when I saw this river here, it's you. I remember that time when Pastor Fritz, when we are doing praise and worship, and Pastor Fritz picked his handkerchief, you can feel the serious dancing. Nowadays, I don't see you, Papa. Serious. And I can see Nimoy moving from back 
and you pick those two handkerchiefs and you can see the true joy. That genuineness of joy is not artificial, it's not karma, it's spiritual. You can see that dancing. Nowadays, nowadays we are artificial. We have we fake it. It's more than that. There is a river, there is a stream. It gladdens the people of God. It makes the people, the city. You can feel that joy. I remember there was a watchman here. He called him security man. You see, anytime I st- is anytime I'm going to difficult and I will step in this ground, have this chapel grounds here. You see the joy. Can we pull up? Because there is a river. My brothers, do you know why nowadays we pray and we don't feel this joy? We fake it. We pretend. And it's more than that. Because it's a city. Isaiah chapter 6, verse 1. When Isaiah, Isaiah entered the church, he saw the king. It was not ordinary. You see, Isaiah was a politician. He was a spokesman for the king. To the king. And because of the king, he couldn't allow himself to save God. But the day that obstacle died, Isaiah saw God. And this is the description. In the year that King Isaiah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up. His train filled the temple. Nowadays, we fake praise and worship. We entertain one another. We don't entertain the king. Praise and worship is for the king. Hallelujah. The Bible says he helped the praise of his children. He lifted him. I remember years back. Lifting him higher. Lifting him higher. Lifting, and you can see the floor. Nowadays, you see, we have covered ourselves so much with, a, with, with diplomatic behavior. So we don't bring ourselves in to whatever we are doing. Go and check King David. Anytime King David was dancing in the presence of God, the mystery, the church, Zion, you can see sincere dancing. Sincere dancing. Nowadays, the only dancing we dance, we tap our leg. And because we have compromise, we love the secular songs more than the gospel songs. The truth is that some of us we have different types of CDs. You love Bob Marley. Hallelujah. Nowadays, when we come to church, we, we WhatsApp. We joke. We do WhatsApp. Whereby we are in the presence of the king. Can you go into the presence of a Kufadu and WhatsApp? Do WhatsApp. Whereby you have been given time. To go through the protocol. In fact, the protocol itself will bounce you. But nowadays, this is how we do in the church. But whereby we are in the presence of the king. The angels are moving around. Nowadays, we complain. We mama. Anytime you complain, it's like you pick in your pen and you are cancelled the prayers you prayed. Yes, it's like you have you have you have write your will that this is what I want to. You know, uh, give to my children, and all of a sudden you got angry and you pick a pen and you decided to cancel all. Complaints cancel our prayers because anytime you complain, you don't pray. There is difference between prayer and complain. And I can tell you, I can see from our homes, our houses. Stop complaining about Ghana. We are not from here. They are just passing by. Our kingdom is from heaven. Yes, Hallelujah. Yes. If I listen, wave your hands. 
Am I speaking? Verse 2. Fast. Now this is the description. You see, church, nowadays we don't talk about angels. That is why other, other, gospel, other religious bodies are saying they are the angels. Because we're supposed to talk about angels. Is it true? Yes. Nowadays, the next generation, we pastors, we don't talk about angels. But the truth is that the church, anytime, look, look, Hebrews chapter 12, that talks about 22, 22 24. It talks about the angels, the uncountable angels. We have to talk about them. We have to talk about them. We have to show the rare angels to our children. Nowadays, we don't talk about it. We talk about Holy Spirit is good. We talk about Jesus is good. What about the angels, our messengers? So nowadays, even if our angels is close to us, we don't know. Yes, we don't know. We have to allow ourselves to teach the details of everything concerning the gospel. It's very important. Because Isaiah saw angels. And he was describing these angels. They are not ordinary. And look at, look at their activity. They are worshipping God. Verse 3, first. And one crying unto another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. Nowadays, we don't see the glory of God. We quote the latter, the latter glory shall be greater than the former glory. After quoting, the spirit will not back in it. Because the one who is quoting is faking it. It's more than quoting. Hallelujah. 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 Verse 4. Now look at the confession. Verse 5. Now, you see, nowadays we force people to repent. You can't force them. It's the Holy Spirit that do the conviction. I've seen a certain man. I remember I was preaching the gospel to this man, and he will insult me. And one day, Christ, uh, Easter, he was going to his work, and there was a school, a school park, and they were doing crus a crusade. And he said, he was just passing by saying, and he said, he moved first steps. He said, something hold him. And do you know what happened? The man was doing this. <laughs> Jesus, forgive me. And this man is a popular in that area. And everybody was watching him. And he moved straight to the altar. And as I'm talking to you now, the man is born again. Look at Paul. He was testing the disciples. He was fighting the church. And as he was going, Jesus disappeared. Paul, Paul, why are you persecuting me? Who are thou? He said, I am Jesus. And he fell down. This is what happened to Isaiah. And he said, Oh, it's me. For I am on now. Because I am a man of unclean lips. And I dwell in the midst of people who are unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the king, the Lord of hosts. You see, Muslims who are repenting in our time, 21st century, is Jesus that is showing himself to them. Yes. He just tapped them. And they repent. My brothers and sisters, do you know what Jesus said concerning his church? He said, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell can never prevail against it. You think he's a weak Jesus? He's so powerful. Hallelujah. He's so powerful. He said, I'll build my church. And the gates of hell can never prevail against it. When we allow ourselves and we allow the Holy Spirit to work in us, my brothers and sisters, sometimes you'll be just a vessel 
and Holy Spirit will use you. My brother, the truth is that if I move from the pulpit right now and you say, let us speak English, I will make to talk about Passover. I'm telling you, that is the reality. But if I pick the mark and I'll allow myself, and any time I wanted to be arrogant and say that I can do it by myself, that was the time I would fail for all. Yes. Because it's not the work of man. Let's hear what Job said. Job chapter 29 verse 6. First. Job chapter 29 verse 6. Yes. River. When I wash my steps with butter and the rock poured on me out rivers of oil. Look at it. Have you seen oil that have been mixed with water before it becomes so powerful it becomes so dangerous if you don't remember go to circle and go and check the histories of ghana the day the oil mixed with water it became a disaster is it true go to circle the same applies to us when the rivers of the living waters were free inside you and holy spirit pour the oil on you you become extraordinary extraordinary all the job's life was a secret in fact for the sake of time let me move on the second mystery i will talk about is our faith is a mystery faith we are using is a mystery look at me that day i was thinking in fact anytime you are about to move by faith and you are using your senses you miss it because the senses will sense danger. Because first I was thinking about those who mark me. I was thinking about those who accuse me. I was thinking about those who, who, who tag me with a wrong grammar. I was thinking about all those things. And God said, if you don't change, change will change you. So change so I'll, I hope against hope because Abraham was moved by faith and God accredited to him as righteousness he believed he didn't consider that his body is old nowadays we don't move by genuine faith we are afraid about what people will say so we fake it Salah the Bible says that Salah moved. He believed the promises of God. Sometimes when we read the Bible and we come across the promises of God, sometimes it becomes very difficult for us to hold on to the promises of God because we don't believe. The letter killed it, but the spirit behind it gave it life. So sometimes we quote the Bible but we don't allow the spirit behind it to overshadow us. The truth is that there are a lot of promises God is showing to his children. Healing promises, prosperity promises, all the promises are here and amen. But sometimes we move by 50-50. Odo kakra kakra. But all the people that God have used mightily, first, God take their pride. Yes. That is why he waited for. Because Abraham was working with God and God was calling him his friend. But he lacked capacity to bring forth a child. And any time you go to God, God said, ah, I will give it to you. At that time, God was working 
the capacity of Abraham's belief because he will be a father a role model a yastic a father of faith a generational signboard for people to follow so God was working through Abraham's feet my brothers maybe you are the first born in your family you became a first christian in your family you did the first wedding in your family you bought the first car in your family you became a first graduate in your family all this good about you there is more room for you to improve yourself and one of the one of the ways is faith because faith is a mystery Paul talks about small faith, little faith, great faith. Which kind of faith, which kind of faith do you have? Which level of faith do you, are you operating? Sometimes when I watch the Pope, his faith is not ordinary. Yes. That is why he's doing extraordinary ordinary things. My brother, if we remain normal, we will do normal things. Turn to somebody. If you remain normal, you do normal things. I remember, Pastor, that day was the one that was forcing me to speak English. Every time you come to me, you say, That's been our camp of food. Oh, true? That's been our camp of food. That's been our camp of food. And I was thinking, you see, I went to, I went to, I was, I was, I was so passionate about speaking to you. I went to a, a, a Thurman branch and at that, at that day I remember I said me I will preach you in white man's land I didn't know that I'm joking <laughs> because I've, I've listen it is not wrong to speak to you but you see always God prepares you where you are going not where you find yourself now yeah. are you getting me yeah. Joseph think that you'll be a prime minister in a father's house but God said no that was not your destination and even the time he was confessing more that i'm seeing my dream that i'll be a prime minister i'll be great i'll be great now god said let me create an environment that will force you not to be comfortable here and a pick fight are you saying you'll be great you wait for the fight to come if you can confess the same thing then it can in reality it will happen so the blood is forcing and you know what they do? He said, dream and go and dream. Turn to somebody, dream and go and dream. <laughs> hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. First Timothy chapter 3 verse 9. I said faith is a mystery faith is a mystery holding the mystery of faith in a, in a pure conscience holding the mystery of faith in a pure conscience pure conscience pure conscience faith is a mystery how can you say let the weak say i am strong whereby you know that this person is weak Are you telling me that uh, how can you know that i'm weak and you say say that you are strong in fact somebody who is using his five senses will say you are mad because i'm weak the reality is that i'm weak you know jesus said peter upon this rock i will build my church and the gates of hell can never prevail against it and Peter said, what are you talking about? Me? Don't you know my name? Simon. Unstable. My name is Unstable. And you are saying you will build a church on Unstable platform. Unstable. Me? Some of us, any time a prophecy comes to you, you don't believe because you look from your state where you find yourself now you don't think about the God who said with me all things are possible yeah. Yeah. hallelujah 
Please, are you? If you are listening, wave your hands and let me see. My dear, do what me a deep out. We are, we are charismatic. Say we are charismatic. I say, say somebody say we are charismatic. And I'm in Kony Bugabga. Okay, let me go. Let me go, Bugabga. Now, faith is the substance of things you are hoping for, the evidence of things you don't see. Through this, the elders obtain good report. Do you want a good report? Then move from one to two, two to three. Because whether you like it or not, your faith will be tested. Oh, true. Do you, do you love God? Abraham! choose your son the one you love and the bible says that and god tested abraham you want to be in the classroom of the kingdom you don't want to go through the test all of us will be tested and that is the truth you'll be tested sometimes you cry more and more and god will tell you my grace is sufficient for you said my grace is sufficient for you this guy something he said he said for the sake of the revelations go assign the angel of satan imagine god you said you are prepared things for those who love now i love you so much and he said you have to promote it. you have assigned an angel of satan purposely to mark me a dangerous defender so that I will not raise myself. And anytime this tone of my flesh, I cry that Father, take it away. You don't say anything. You say, My grace is sufficient for you. Imagine. And I believe that some of us who are praying consistently. You see, I remember a certain sister who are being used beyond some age. And it's beautiful. You can see every side of this sister that is beautiful. In fact, there is no loophole. There is no mark. You can see the beauty. The beauty. Now, please, I'm serious. I'm serious. I'm in Zion. I'm serious. I'm enjoying Zion. I'm in Zion. Now, this is time to wait patiently for God to bring the right person. And I can tell you, consistently, a lot of people are proposing dangerous men, dangerous demons. But anytime he prays, God said, wait for my timing. Don't rush. And the time was catching this sister. Anytime he pray, fast they pray, fast they pray. God said, still wait for my timing. I remember one day a church member came to me and was complaining bitterly. And as I was sitting in front of this church member, Holy Spirit just gave me inspiration. He said, ask him, if your child is crying, and you are cooking for that child you are cooking porridge for your child and this child is crying uncontrollable will you put the fire off and give the food to the child and he said no i said why he said it will kill the child and i said can't you know that god is preparing something for you and you need a patient <laughs> the reason why we don't have this patient patient is a virtue nowadays we don't have patient do you know why we are moving around because we thought that god is delaying we thought that sometimes god is not here but the truth is that god is here ask somebody can you have time for your god god is the Bible says that in his time he made all things beautiful. Imagine God visiting you. Look at the day he visited Salah. It was a special day. Angels were just passing by. And God said, Can I hide this thing from Abraham? I have chosen him as my friend. He will be a father of many nations. Okay, angels, go visit this man. Now they just approached Abraham. And the first word, Yabba this time. 
your wife Sarah will give birth. Now Sarah was in the kitchen laughing. Do you know why? The reason why he was laughing. What are you talking about? And say, many years Now the angels just chipping. Why Salah is laughing? Why is he laughing? And do you know what they quoted? Is there anything too hard for God? Do you remember me? Yes. 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 Can I, can I share testimony? I remember that day I was leading prayer here. And I saw Olive standing here. And I said, Olive, don't allow anybody to disturb you. God said, I should tell you, he will visit you. And I remember the day she was in labor. He said, what's your, what's your, your name came into my mind. At that time, they were looking for the fruit of the womb. Yes. When he came to Takwadi to share a testimony, that's why I'm confirming this testimony. Because they didn't hide it. They shared it. He shared it in front of everybody. <laughs> Turn to somebody and say, is there anything too hard for God? <laughs> Me, I don't like the way some of you, you prophesy. I say, shake the person and say, is there anything too hard for the Lord? I remember uh, Scotland. Papa prayed for one of the church members. Yes. And after the, after, the, after the program, the guy just approached me and I said, Hey, the general overseer have laid hands. And you want the branch also to lay hands. Oh, I, I can mention her name. Now he has given birth. Oh. Also, for the same year now, Ubon Pino, one year paper pen on or oh, yeah. Because he prayed, he prayed. Papa prayed all his heart and he prophesied nowadays i don't see pastor emma prophesy i remember years back he was prophesying and i thought that people were calling prophet do you remember i want to re you see all these giftings are inside them now as the more they are growing the more they have to impact impact to all of us say papa impact are you are you afraid say, say papa impact God bless those who are clapping. They want to suffer to prophesy. Oh, it's true. Years back, you will stand here and give the, the, the details. I'm seeing this, I'm seeing this. Nowadays, all these things. My brothers, the giftings are here. My name is Reviver. The giftings are here. Thank you. Have you seen me preaching like this before? It shows to you that the giftings are here. Why, anytime we invite somebody from outside, that was the time this house would be full? Why? Do you know why the reason why we are doing that? Okay, I won't say it. <laughs> okay, for the sake of my time, let me move on. Let me move on. Our wisdom is a mystery. Church is a mystery. Our faith is a mystery. Our, the wisdom we are operating in the house of God is a mystery. It's not ordinary. We have four kinds of wisdom. We have the wisdom of God, which is from above. We have the wisdom of men. We have the earthly wisdom. 
and we have the, 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 the uh, demonic or devilish wisdom four and we will operate the supernatural one which is from god that is what paul says that he said don't you know that you are the one that will judge angels so we should not handle small small matters he was talking about superiority of our the wisdom we are operating it's not ordinary look at the way daniel was moving beyond natural can't you see in the bab in the in the land of babylon huh? when the the bible says that when nebuchadnezzar assessed them he asked them questions daniel was 10 times better Weightier matters when they weigh them, when they value them, Daniel was ten times better. Nowadays, my brothers and sisters, you hide your wisdom, I hide my wisdom. You hide your knowledge, I hide my knowledge. Do you know why? We are selfish. You keep yours and I keep mine. Our revelational wisdom is not ordinary. We're supposed to cancel kings. In fact, the Kufuado, we are the ones that are supposed to cancel him. That is the truth. It's not politician that's supposed to cancel the Kufuado. No, we. We are the ones. In olden days, in families, Anytime they are waiting for somebody, they wait for Christians. I'm talking about olden days, 80s. When somebody is looking for somebody to employ, they look for Christian in that time. Nowadays, we are smart in sin. For the sake of time, let's move on. Isaiah chapter 33 verse 6 1st Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 but okay the wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of our times and strength of salvation the fear of the Lord is his treasure now first uh, first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 fast Mirashi fast your mama type fast fast oh please and now first Corinthians chapter 2 verse 7 uh -huh. now he said but we speak the wisdom of God in mystery even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the word unto our glory and anytime the, the, this earth in a certain situation you check from the Bible days they look for solution and most of the case a man of God will come in Go to Egypt, Joseph. The time fellow was dreaming. God intentionally shut all the wisdoms of this earth because he was about to promote one person. Somebody's destiny was about to be fulfilled, and it was Joseph. So he shut all the wisdom, and nobody could interpret fellow's dream. Now now joseph was interpreting dreams in his father's house and god said now move from your comfort zone go to the place i will show you and what was it was not easy but he was learning according to psalms he said he tested me he tested me you see some of us when any time we are in difficult times that was the time we don't use our giftings wrong uniska no wolf wrong anytime you are in difficult times that was the time god wants you to use your giftings that is where the wisdom is because it's a hidden it's a mystery yes in fact the first classroom of every learner is not money it's acquired more knowledge yes now can fellow what is your dream seven years seven years we say oh interpretation belongs to god and we need a short time papa and fellow said what in fact we don't we don't, nobody on in, in, in this country egypt is wiser than you 
and as long as God has shown you this mystery, you will be the next. <laughs> nowadays, nowadays, when we speak in tongues, who is who, nobody will interpret it, and we close the church and go home. But the truth is that some tongues are a language. Yes, some tongues are a language. Yeah. <laughs> Whereby, whereby, listen, whereby, whereby, when, when true saints, when the true saints are gathered and we are speaking tongues, the truth is that the Bible says that it can be that God wants to tell us something. Yes. That is why Bible give us, Bible talks about interpretation of tongues. When the tongue becomes language, we need to understand. All these giftings are in Zion, the church. So, my brothers, when I close, we pray just two prayer topics. And now, let's move on. The riches God gives to us is a mystery. The riches, Christianity, the riches is a mystery. It's a mystery. Our riches is a mystery. Colossians chapter 1, verse 27. It's a mystery. That is why uh, uh, I went to Funra in uh, uh, one of the areas of Ashanti region. And they were telling me about a certain Christian who is into uh, electrical. And they said that some when he, he said he quiet quiet type, you come and see the, at the back of the church and he observed it through the church. If he finds somebody who is in need, he will just package that need and go and give to the person. And they said to me that sometimes you can watch from the church the things pastors are not seeing and the church need it. He said you get that himself and go and do it. And he said, God is blessing the man so much. And he and, and this what amazes me is that he said this man is one of the ushers king solomon said the blessings of god he make it written added no soul mystery you see how can you if you want to give me something why are you giving it to me in the dream king solomon riches was in the dream can you answer dreams when you are asleep king solomon did it God visited him in the dream and he said, what do you want from me? Ask anything and I'll give to you. Imagine your spirit talking to God in the dream. In fact, if you are not spiritual, there will be no way you can speak to God in the dream. Some of us, the truth is, after we are praying in tongues, that was the time when we fail in dream. Oh, sometimes the, 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 that madman that was telling you in the dream, do you think it's, it's a normal? Yes. But the King Solomon after he slept and God said what you need from me ask anything and imagine this guy was asking God give me wisdom and God said because you did not ask the ability to chase your enemies do you know now nowadays in our 21st century anytime you see a Christian praying seriously Bande Lucy, Bande Lucy. I said to myself what's wrong with that God did not do that they don't waste more much time about devils they cast them. Is it true? Yeah. They cast them. They, they spend more time about the infilling of the Holy Spirit. Is it true? You check from the book of us. They spend more quality time. As chapter 4, as chapter 5. They were being concerned. They said, feed us so that we'll be bored. But nowadays, let us band our and brother. Some we are banding our wives. Some we are banding our husbands. Some we are, in fact, some we are banding our pastors. Some we are, we are banding everybody. And sometimes when we see a Christian praying and he's sweating, you see bandit. <laughs> that is the truth. But the truth is that, the truth is that, this riches we are talking, he said, to whom God will make know what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. 
Christ in you, the hope of glory. Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7, verse, verse 15 to 17. He said that since I heard about your faith in Christ, I never cease to pray for you that your eyes of understanding may be enlightened so that you may know the hope of his calling and the riches in the midst of the sins. The riches in the midst of the sins. Zion, there is a riches. Jesus called it true riches. You see, nowadays we lie. In fact, we lie. We lie professional lie. In fact, the truth is we can lie. Do you know why? We think that human beings are the ones that will help us. But it is true that God is our helper. Turn to somebody that professes to you that God is your helper. It's a mystery. In fact, it, it amazes people that this is this building is for church it's a mystery can't you get it the first day they were dedicating this church it's like the, the man of god when the lighthouse bishop said, said ah it's like you are a hero is it true he said it he said and he said he said it it's a mystery look at the way you are growing it's a mystery even our laughing is a mystery some they laugh like some they laugh some they laugh it's a mystery do you get it it's a mystery now the gospel the gospel is a mystery the gospel is a mystery the gospel is a mystery I was I was following one of the uh, the 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 secular uh, uh, the secular singers in America. Now he said he has changed. He wanted to, you know, sing gospel. And I said, wow. Yes, it's a mystery. Who touched him? God. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. It's a mystery. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 19. Romans chapter 16 verse 25. Now listen. Paul was praying. He said, and for me, he was talking about this, you pray for him. He said, and for me, that the utterance may be given unto me, that I may open my mouth boldly to make know the mystery of the gospel. Boldly. To make no the mystery of the gospel. Sometimes one of them, one of the things that amazes me, sometimes you can prepare very serious. And God is a drop the yam. <laughs> yes, drop it. In fact, sometimes you can wait the whole night. And when you step the pulpit, you see the atmosphere dictating for you. Sometimes you can't open the Bible. Yes, he would dictate for you. Ah, I remember last year, Papa could not preach. He would go to the pot, he open it and say, "No, I'm here to, I'm here to bless." And he would close the Bible and you come and bless. Ah, you want? You couldn't. You couldn't. This year, when I when I went to the youth camp, I couldn't preach. But I prepared. I said, "I'm going to give to them." But I. I could not I could not because the whole atmosphere was calling for prayer so God said stop talking and let my people talk to me and when we started praying hi and I asked also these young guys they can pray the other day they prayed the whole day in fact the whole night and it almost says 30 I said, Grover, man, come back me. <laughs> no, I'm growing. I'm growing. <laughs> me, me too, me. Nini. When I joined Abestap, I was 28 years. Now I'm growing. 
NTB, I will celebrate my golden jubilee. Yes. Now to him, that is of power to establish you according to my gospel, the preaching of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery which was kept secret since the world began. So it's a mystery. Jesus said a lot of people wanted to see what you are seeing and they did not, they could not. In fact, that is why when he said to the Pharisees, Abraham saw me. He said, what to me? What are you talking about? You are not 50 years since Abraham saw you. Mystery. It, it has been hidden from others. Even as I'm talking, the understanding is given to some people that they are watching me and say, what are you talking about? Yeah, 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 yeah. Because I am a sower. You know, I'm sowing. Some are falling into a good grounds. Others wayside. Others tongues. And Satan is speaking his picture. We when you see those papa. We all over when you see different is to me. Oh ah. Ah. hey. <laughs> oh, we won't fuck with you definitely. Obu Okra, Obu wants to mention him as Satan the password that turned him. Hey! 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 And last one. And last one. You know, Jesus, we are talking about everything about him is a mystery. Everything about him is a mystery. Jesus, we are talking about everything about him is a mystery. In the beginning was the word, and the word was God, and the word was God. Mystery. The over witness will be confused. But well, it's a mystery. In fact, theologians become sometimes become confused. Because it's a mystery. Abraham called him Jehovah Jireh. My Lord will provide. Some call him El Shaddai. Some call him Ejibo. Some call him Jehovah Nisi. Some call him Jehovah Rapha. What revelation are you getting from him? Even Peter said, My Lord and my Master. What a title. Do you know why sometimes you don't have any words? Because you have not come into this contact with him personal. When you come into this contact with him personal, and you know him as your Lord and personal Savior. That is where you can get these revelations about him. Yes, I am that I am. I am bread of life. Anyone who eats me. Hey, what a word. And Pharisees say, the disciples say, Do you think we are witches and wizards? <laughs> How can we eat you? <laughs> and he said, If you don't eat me, you cannot be my disciple. Now, the whole congregation say a giant church. <laughs> and only the twelve and the ten. And he said, You two, will you go some? And Peter said, You have the words of life. Thomas did not believe. Thomas, our master, have been resurrected. Me! Master, come on, Monsem Kikano. Me, you need that. This is me, I'm the menu. Gani, gani, fili, fili. Now, the Bible says that all the doors have been closed. And this man who don't need gates before he can enter. Just step in their mess. And he went, he went straight to Thomas. First he said, peace be unto you all. Now he said, Thomas, come. Touch me. Touch my hands. 
and he turned again and said blessed are those who have not seen and they believe do you believe your destiny that god will never put you into shame do you believe it you see sometimes a pastor sometimes when the way you are watching the church sometimes it seems like why you have prayed you have fasted you have declared holy ghost fire and that day the church members will not come and jesus will say do you still believe Because everything about Jesus is a mystery. Lazarus, come out! And that was the first time this thing has happened. Somebody that had been buried for four days. In fact, the sister said he's sinking. Oh, boom. Oh, boom. Now he said, let's go. Now he shouted. My last word to all of us is about to shout again. He's about to shout again. Please, so no be a kajai. Let us stop those politics. Indifferences, let us stop. Jai. Because the master is about to shout again. So, he's about to shout again. Nowadays, we couldn't talk about it. Boys are burning the chromo, Boma Conomoba. Who may not use a war front no more ban? Your condo do unnecessary fighting. Quan, you didn't know my solid day. Boys said, No, Beman about solid, no, Obanus about it. What a noble bar member. Okay, we'll miss me by next week. Yeah, you home and away, sir. Can we rise to our feet? Thank you for listening to the message. Visit us on www.harvestinternationalministries.org. Send us an email through office at harvestinternationalministries.org or call us on 0302-222-372 or 0302-229-109. God bless you.